When you want to pursue anti-gravity, one of the main things you have to be able to do is check your ego at the door. To be able to understand other people's viewpoints and understand that you don't always have the answers. Guys, I got to tell you in this one, I honestly think I am wrong. And I think a lot of us are wrong. And we take what we get from others and without verifying a lot of it, we go ahead and we start talking about more of it. And I'm guilty of it. And let me tell you exactly what I'm talking about today. We look at Alexi's gravity flyer circuit, and a lot of us assume at the upper left-hand part that it was a flyback that's running there. And it's been brought to my attention, it's probably not. And this goes to the top and bottom disc, and what we're looking at here is it could just be a transformer with a voltage multiplier. What's the difference? One's 10,000 volts and milliamps, which is the flyback, then you got maybe 200 volts going into a voltage doubler circuit which makes it 400 volts possibly 4 amps down to 1 amp guys when we're talking about circuitry that's a massive difference and it goes to what Alexi was actually building when I show you the actual things that he was working on and what's more in line is the flyback more in line is the voltage multiplier more in line guys the actual schematic is showing a voltage quadrupler circuit at the end of the transformer. Now, I'm well aware that we have all the circuitry and we have the original gravity flyer. Charlie C has it. I don't personally. However, if Alexi mislabeled something, and the circuit that was supposed to be the Tesla coil is the circuit that actually runs the high voltage and the vice versa. You would get the wrong answer in building this craft. That bothered me. It really bothered me last night. We were on the Gravity Flyer uh, Facebook site and talking about it. And this gentleman was insistent on it. And I had to look it up. So when I looked it up, right out of the textbook, quadrupler circuits right there. Alexi put one extra diode that doesn't need to be there. The circuit 100% looks like it. So the question is, how does that affect what we're doing? Well, it goes back to Alexi's work. We can actually see exactly what Alexi was looking at and what kind of project he was building. And that tells you a lot about an inventor. So, guys, I want to show you all this stuff, and I also want to give credence to what he was saying. He has plenty of things on his YouTube site that will actually change your mind on this. When you take a paper lifter and you're lifting it with a Tesla coil, not, excuse me, not a paper lifter, you're lifting an ion wind lifter with a Tesla coil and not a flyback transformer, you have my attention. When you can take a disc and you, you hang it from the ceiling and you can get the thing to swirl and go up, you have my attention. Guys, when you're building circuitry on your channel and I can see that you're going through the process of how things work, you have my attention. Guys, I'm looking for these things to validate claims. I think this is a very good validation of the claim. Let's get into some of this stuff on his channel. Let's take a look at what he was looking at, and let's see if we can't verify this thing. And I'll show you the best one out of the box first. Let's look at the one where he has it hanging, and that disc starts to spin up. You can decide on this in the end, but I'm going to show it to you now. Let's get into it. So we have a disc with a motor suspended from the ceiling, and we have high voltage going into it. From what I understand, it's 400 volts, 1 amp. So let's see how we do. There we go. We can see the spark distance. We can tell the amps are relatively low. There it goes. It starts taking off. 
So you can see his hand in there. He's just making sure it doesn't go crazy right away. Make sure he builds up the energy into it. Let's see. Moves his hand. Let's see what it does. Make sure the energy is close enough. And it takes off. Alright guys. That's pretty impressive. For a lot of us looking at gravity flyers all day that don't move anywhere. It's an impressive test. There it goes again. As soon as it gets into contact with it, there's a force upward. Let's go ahead and take a look at this from another angle. This is a separate test that he did. Apparently this is like the uh, fog test or smoke test. We're just looking to see exactly how much wind is coming off of this. Now the one thing I will say is I don't see the uh, voltage being put into it right now. So anything produced here is just a motor running. As we can see there's a very little amount of wind coming off of this. Which is to be expected because there's no bend in the disc. It's pretty flat. And every time I've done this test it does the same thing. There's barely anything coming off of it. So you could probably get more out of a PC fan than you can this. So, I would have loved to see the voltage on it so that we could see if the ion wind was taking anything more than what we're getting now, but we didn't get it here. You can get a good look at the motor, though, and how it rotates. So, that's always good. So, yeah, not, not a whole lot. I mean, enough to blow, out the, uh, to blow out the flame, but not enough to do much more. What's he doing starting that on fire? Oh, no, he's just bringing it up. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was taking that string and putting it on fire. I can't tell you how many times I'd love to do that when somebody gives me a comment about strings. So the first two experiments were pretty impressive, guys. The first one was really good. He got that thing to spin up. Let's look at this one now. We're looking at a Tesla coil, and we're looking at an ion lifter, and it lifts. Now, normally we see a flyback transformer lifting an ion lifter. And because of the more volts, less amps aspect of it, we can get ion wind. This right here is a Tesla coil. We still get ion wind, so is it surprising? Not necessarily. What I'm really looking at here is we have a gravity flyer that is basically a Tesla coil and some sort of high voltage source. So, when you get a Tesla coil to lift one of these, it becomes impressive in how we look at our gravity flyer. Because it gives us hope for any type of lift. This is basically ion wind, but it still, still is a Tesla coil lifting it. That impresses me a lot, guys. You just don't see it a whole lot. And this right here tells you kind of, hey, you got something more going on. You got some you got some verification going on on your channel here. So you know, again, yeah, he shows it's on. Let's see, you know, see it lift one more time. I would have loved to see this uh the ion craft here in more detail. That's one of the things I'd love to see. Because it looks pretty thick. And I can't see the wire on top. And to be honest with you, the way he's touching things, I don't know if there is. And if there's no wire on top, that's even more impressive. So how is he lifting it? So this is going to be one of those things where I hope the inventor goes back and he shows us everything about this. We saw a quick picture, but that's, that's not enough. If there's no wire on top, how's it working? Is the wire in the center? Is it a coil? Is it simply the Tesla coil lifting it with the coil? Which would be 10 times more impressive than a simple wire on top. So... I really hope that we can look back at this and uh, do a follow-up video on this one just right here because that looks impressive. Here's another video from his site. Again, we see the Tesla coil. Guys, I'm not seeing a wire on top of this one either. I don't know what's going on here. The, the wires are just run to this piece of, what, Tupperware you would call it? I don't know, uh, a Something from my wife's kitchen, it looks like. He's touching on the top. There's obviously no wire up there. This thing is not running like uh, like an average ion lifter. 
So when I tell you that this guy got my attention with what he claimed on the circuitry, and then you look at his site, guys, I'm getting more impressed the more and more I dig into this. I want to build that. I'm sure a lot of you out there want to build this. Doesn't look so hard. Go to the 99 cent store, pick up one of these little uh, aluminum things right here, hook up our Tesla coil, let's find out if it works. Now, what I would really love is for the inventor to do maybe an interview about this and talk about it in depth because there's more here. Okay, let's look at another one. If you're into anti gravity, at some point you came across uh, Gerbenikov. So, this guy has some pretty random objects here, obviously, nothing to do with the material here. What I want to know in this whole thing right here, by, by the way, I'd love to know what that was. Um, you know, we can pretty much identify the rest, but that one right there, you know, just from a geological point of view, I would love to know what that was. But, what's under the paper? I mean, what... What are you doing here? We all know Grabenikov had a device we use. We see it when we look at Kedian physics and his experiments. He's reproducing that same thing. And we see on this guy's side, he's working with Tesla coils. So Tesla coils, high voltage, kind of gives you an understanding of what we're looking at here. So again, another impressive thing. Would have loved to know what that one is too. So, sorry guys, I'm into geology. I, I, I like rocks. I, I like crystals more. This right here looks unsafe. Yeah, that's pretty much unsafe. Let's take something that we know is going to throw it in the air and let's put razor blades on it. Now, I would love to tell you that I wouldn't do that, but I would be lying to you. I would definitely do it. Okay, more random stuff. Plastics. We went from metal to plastics from, re, you know, geological stuff. Again, I'd love to know what that is. I'd love to see if they had any magnetic properties. But uh, that was pretty impressive, guys. When you, when you can pull off the amount of things that we're seeing here, it gives credence to your claims when you start talking about other things with the gravity fire. So let's just throw it all on there. Why not? There we go. Bunch of random stuff. <laughs> it's got even more force the more that you put onto it. That's impressive. Let's just get more force and just add a ton of weight. Okay, now that we've seen some of the inventions on this guy's site, let's go ahead and get into our original premise here. This is a Lexi schematic right here. What we're looking for is the upper left hand portion. I know Alexi's schematic's hard to read, so let's look at a better one. And here we go again. Let's identify the part that he's looking at here. It's in the upper left hand portion again. And we're looking at a voltage quadrupler circuit. And let's look at the schematic side by side. So what I'm looking at right here is on the right side is the voltage quadrupler circuit. We know right out of the textbook it works. We look at a Lexi circuit on the left. It doesn't work. I built it. It does not function. If we change it just a few diodes and a few capacitors in the right place, we get the voltage quadrupler circuit. Now again, we have to change a few things in there, but not very much. All the main parts are there, which give credence to the argument, is it not a flyback, and is it a voltage quadrupler circuit with a regular transformer? To be honest with you, it's kind of hard to look at this and not see it that way. So let's do our due diligence here. Here in the actual drive that Charlie sent us in the original gravity flyer, this is labeled as the Tesla coil circuit. Let's break it down. This right here is our full bridge rectifier, so AC to a DC conversion. We also have our transformer right here. It looks like we have a capacitor with a resistor right there. 
and it looks like we have one more resistor right here so this right here is the breakdown that Charlie gave us and I'd say it's fairly accurate on everything here except for the Tesla coil and you might ask why would I say that well there's no MOSFET there's no transistor in here there's no fast switching that a Tesla coil requires this is a driver circuit if you said this is a cheap version of a ZVS, well, you'd still be missing the transistor and MOSFET. So, the potentiometer, obviously, we had on the other circuit. I didn't see it probably on the outside. It is here. It still begs the question, this is not a Tesla coil driving circuit. This is a transformer circuit that rectifies AC to DC yet it lacks anything to drive the Tesla coil. This also gives credence to the argument that yes, it could be a voltage quadrupler circuit at the end of this, and we just didn't get the circuit. But it also was right that Charlie was good enough to break this down, and we could see it goes here. But the Tesla coil may be wrong. My biggest question is this. Did Alexi mislabel this thing? Because we all know Charlie, we know he's 100% accurate in what he does, and we know that he's very precise at it. So was it a mislabeling problem? Because this clearly will not drive that Tesla coil. So let's look at the original schematic one more time. In looking back at this original schematic, again, let's take our attention to the upper left. We obviously know this circuit. That is a ZVS circuit. There's no question about that. Then we get to a transformer. Then we get to a voltage quadrupler circuit. Here's the thing, guys. That last circuit is a driver circuit. So if all we wanted to do was get from the driver circuit to the transformer and then put a voltage quadrupler circuit on it, it makes perfect sense. What doesn't make sense is driving a Tesla coil with that circuit. But again, it was labeled as this is a Tesla coil driving circuit. It can't drive a Tesla coil. So, let's look at the circuit that was given for the high voltage and see if it is a circuit that can be used for a Tesla coil. So this is the one that's labeled high voltage circuit. So, let's ask the question, can this run a Tesla coil? The answer is yes. Can this run high voltage? The answer is yes. Both of them can be run the same way. Now, this would generally be a spark gap Tesla coil. Not really a problem. We can do that. Let me show you an example of a very horrible first time Tesla coil builder of myself building a spark gap Tesla coil with this setup. Now that we kind of have a lot more information, let's take a picture from Alexi himself. This right here came exactly from his video and we can see that he has a circuit on the bottom that runs a flyback transformer. We also see the Tesla coil. Are they interconnected? Well, we don't know. To be honest with you, I don't think that they are in this. Could it be an example of, hey, this is what's inside the black box? Yes, it could. Could it also be that the other circuit was the one he's driving his Tesla coil with it? Well, Without some kind of transistor MOSFET or something like that, I doubt it. So, let's look at what a Tesla coil is. That's basically what we're going to have to do here. A Tesla coil is simply this. We have to take a magnetic pulse and we have to put it in the bottom coil. It will then introduce a secondary pulse in the longer secondary coil. That's all a Tesla coil is. But the thing to get you there is where we can use a flyback to put a pulse into it because it's run off a GBS, we cannot take a circuit that does not have a transistor or MOSFET or some kind of fast switching in order to run a Tesla coil because it doesn't work. So let's just verify everything then. Let's look at the bottom left hand corner. That is the Tesla coil driving circuit that Alexi gives in his main schematic. We all know this circuit. 
it's a Slayer Exciter circuit. In every picture I showed you, I do not see a Slayer Exciter circuit anywhere. Not one. Not even a hint of it. It's not there. So, where does that leave us? Occam's Razor. Suppose an event has two possible explanations. The explanation that requires the fewest assumption is usually correct. That's what we have here. You see, none of us can get a hold of Alexi and verify and see, is it a labeling error? Is it correct? So we have to take the very principles that go into this. And look, I'll tell you this right now. Charlie C. has never, ever lied to me and he's never done anything that would say that he was wrong. To be honest with you, I agree with a lot of stuff that he says and, you know, I've always known him to be truthful. But this isn't necessarily about him. This is about the science of anti-gravity and this device. When I tell you we all have to check our ego at the door, I meant it. So I have to check mine now. It is time to give credence to this voltage quadrupler circuit. It makes sense. It looks like it's right with the schematic. It looks like it's right with the materials that were sent over. So it's up to us to verify it. The simplest solution is the simplest thing to do. Build a circuit. It's going to change things. So let's take a look at exactly what it's going to change. Guys, I don't have a dog in this fight. Except for the fact that I want this thing to lift off the ground. I know that everybody in this whole thing wants this thing to lift off the ground. So the right thing to do here is to build a circuit. What do we got to lose? We see an inventor that's showing us a lot of different ways to do things. We see all the stuff that came in. The actual simplest solution is to follow the schematic and let's build it and find out. The winner takes all, man. It's that simple. If it works better this way, Let's do it. So, what's the implications of building this circuit? Let's look at the two real quick, and let's give it an answer. The average flyback transformer puts out about 10,000 volts and milliamps. So, what would a voltage quadrupler circuit do? Well, if you assume that the first input is 200 volts, then you're going to double the voltage. So, you're going to get up to 400 volts. If your input amps is about 10 amps or 5 amps, say 5, what you would get in the doubler circuit is you would get down to maybe 1 to 2 amps. So, when we look at it that way, we have to look at what a lower voltage and higher amperage produced a better result. As you can see, the picture right here is one of Alexi's experiments. And the quick question is, would this experiment work better with lower voltage but higher amperage? The answer is yes. You're polarizing a piece of PVC in this by using aluminum. The answer is the more amps in it but not an over amount of amps is better than to have milliamps in the circuit. So it gives credence to the voltage multiplier circuit. So... The actual answer is for our device that we're working on in the gravity flyer, would it be better if we're looking at following what Alexi did and polarizing the actual disc? The answer is yes. If it gives us this same look right here where the disc spins and flies up and that's 100% accurate, then we absolutely have to put this into our circuit because we want this thing to lift off the ground. Common sense, I'm going to try it. It's not that much money, guys. I spent more money on something I blew up in two seconds. So, 150 bucks to prove the answer is a little bit out of my pocket, but I'm good to do it. Well, I mean, if we're going to go after Amphitite Gravity, let's, let's put everything to the test and let the science tell us who the winner is. So, that's where I'm at. I'm going to link all the videos you saw here today in the description. I'm also going to link our Facebook group in the description. 
so that if you want to get in on part of the conversation that's going on there that you can. Also, if you would like your channel profiled, by all means, let me know. If you have stuff that's like this, it's really cool, uh, electrical, as long as it has to do with anti-gravity, guys, I'm all in. If it has to do with atmospheric uh, electricity, I'm all in as well. Anything that's kind of cool like that, if you want to do a profile on this, we can even go as far as a video chat and talk about some of the inventions if you guys want to. I'm all good for all of it. And that's it for today, guys. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things. And have yourself a great day. Thank you.